Now, once you have your figure totally fleshed out with either uh, aluminum foil or paper or a combination of all th and tape and combination of all three, then we can start uh, creating sort of the final layer, which is are the plaster strips. And these are the plaster strips here that I sent to you in these little bags. Okay, so you will need to have a little container of water here. Um, warm water works a little bit better, although it doesn't really matter. Um, and before you start, make sure, take a look to make sure the tape is sort of down pretty well. Poke any little spots that are sort of sticking out. Fix any little places that need to be fixed. I mean, like I did a combination of my, my foil and my tape, so I kind of had the tape kind of wrapping over the foil, so there was a little bit more of a seamless transition there where I've got like these areas in here, like I could add a little bit more tape if I wanted to. And I played around with the, the, the pose a little bit just to make sure it was working pretty well. I could have added a little bit more foil here, but I ran out, so that's okay. Okay, and so I'm ready to start doing this. Now, I'm gonna be wearing rubber gloves, um, only not because of the, ew, it's gross, but this stuff really, really dries out my hands really badly. So this, it does dry out your hands, so if you are not wanting your hands totally dirty, you're more than welcome to get some gloves. Um, you know, in the classroom, I basically don't ever have kids get gloves because I just don't have enough gloves for everybody and it's sort of a, it's, a, it's an expense for, of materials and I'd rather have, spend money on materials for art making purposes and not quite so much, so much other stuff. Okay, but you're welcome to use gloves if you have them. Now, so how this works, a couple things. So make sure that you don't take a pile of these and stick them right here because once water gets on these it activates the plaster in there okay and then once it dries that's it and it won't be reactivated it'll be this hard little chunk so if you have this next to your water in a pile and you're going back and forth and you're dripping that's what's going to happen is you're going to have these little activated bits in here that are going to become hard and chunky and they won't smooth out okay so do this and you'll definitely want to have some kind of covering over your table or whatever uh, you happen to be doing this on. I've got this nice big piece of plastic that I'm using. Uh, they, it works really well because of course it's waterproof. Uh, newspaper will work fine but make sure you have quite a few layers underneath so that you don't get your, uh, your surface area too wet. So I'm just going to dip this in and I'm going to kind of squoosh it around a little bit. And I'm going to squoosh it and sort of I can sort of really covering those holes up. And then I'm just going to sort of put it on my piece and kind of wrap it around. I'm going to smooth it out. Okay, I can really sort of smooth it out. And you can see in here where I'm sort of getting rid of all of those little holes. And that's what you want to do. You want to get it nice and smooth to get rid of all those little holes. Okay. I'm just going to get another piece. Again, I'll dip it in. And as I'm squishing it, I'm squishing it over the little bucket to minimize the amount of drippage that I get all over the place. And I'm just sort of overlapping a little bit. And again, smearing and smoothing as I go. And notice that I've got to turn this kind of around and around to make sure it's all the way covered. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this other spot over here. Okay, now these triangles are fairly large. If you find them to be a little too large, you're more than welcome to just cut them with a pair of scissors, okay, to make them a little smaller. But the triangles work the best because they curve around the surfaces better, okay? So just kind of make sure that you're continuing turning your sculpture around. It's freestanding, so we've got to make sure that all angles are there. And what you're trying to do is pretty much just get one layer of the plaster strips around the entire sculpture. Once we get the one layer, then we can go back and figure out, do I need a second layer? Probably not, since your sculptures are not going to be terribly large. What you have in your bag should do a pretty good job of covering everything. And so you overlap a little bit. And again, I'm really coming in here with my finger. 
I'm really sort of squishing. There's a little bit of a lump there, but that's okay. I'm trying to get any of those little stuck up spots. And I'm just kind of going around and around until I get the entire thing covered by one layer. And I'm sort of overlapping as I go. That was kind of a small one. But it's really, really important that you smooth it out as you go. So when you're finished, you'll have this nice, fairly smooth surface on your piece. Now this stuff takes a little while to dry. Um, you'll, you'll notice it firming up quite quickly. Um, and as it, as it dries, the water will sort of evaporate and it will become less heavy. It starts out a little bit on the heavy side and it'll actually sort of change in color slightly. It'll be kind of dark to start out with. And then as it dries, it'll become a lot lighter. Okay, but again, I'm just kind of working around. Make sure to really smooth that out. And again, I'm not really building up a lot of layers right now. I'm just doing that first coat. So we're just looking for one coat or one layer of the plaster strips first. Okay. And then once we have our one layer, we can go back and determine, do I have enough layers? Do I have enough plaster strips to do a second layer? And you might want to do a second layer. I would kind of recommend it at the end. Uh, it'll firm your sculpture up. It'll make it stronger. And you know you can you can build up the width a little bit more. Okay, and there's also some other things you can do. Now, if you've got a base, you're also going to want to make sure that you plaster down your base as well. Got to drip that off there. Okay, right over the tape. And you'll want to cover the whole thing so it really gets solidified on there. You don't need to go around the other side, but you can just cover the whole thing. It will also give the base a little bit more weight so that it won't, your sculpture won't be tipping over. But of course, the more plaster you add to your sculpture, the heavier it gets, and areas like this are really gonna tend to sort of lean. Okay, but it will firm up. And that's how you add uh, plaster to your piece.